but I want to bring in Dr. Jeanette Neshwat and Dr. Mark Siegel to discuss this. A real big issue for President Trump. Uh, we saw earlier this year, Merck said, okay, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cut back. Uh, and by the way, they had a great earnings report this morning. Uh, Sell Gene said, we'll only hike rate, hike them one more time and only at the rate of inflation. So these big drug companies seem to be listening. Uh, are you seeing a difference out there? With, because this is the number one issue for so many people, the high cost of these prescription drugs. I certainly am seeing a difference. Remember, Pfizer tried to increase their prices recently by 10 to 20 percent, and that was stomped when President Trump gave his speech. And, you know, there's the, 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 the fear of having fines, just like Mallinckrodt was fined $100 million for increasing their cost of Akthar from $40 a vial to $40,000 a vial. So this is music to our ears because it's going to help us better take care of our patients um, and especially focus on getting the FDA to increase their approval of generics, creating more generics. Should, should the major drug companies have a longer period of exclusivity, considering they spend billions on this, on these drugs in the first place? 20 years? That's plenty of time for a patent. But they they're, they are seeming to gaming the patent system, making tiny oh, yeah. tweaks. Just Most of them have more lawyers yeah. than doctors, scientists yeah. these days. Yeah. And absolutely, Charles, and they continue, they extend those patents beyond 20 years, and because the, the rules which are now changing, and President Trump was right to call call out uh, FDA Commissioner Gottlieb on this. He's changed the rules so that biosimilars and generics can come in more and get approved. And, and, and as President Trump said, over a thousand new approvals for generics last year alone. Let me tell you why this is important, because we're at a time of great innovation. And the new HHS report on this shows that biologics, treatments for cancer, insulin, our new insulins, they work better than ever. This should be happy news, right? But the prices are going up tenfold on some of these new treatments that save lives. The new HHS report shows, Charles, that compared to other countries, we're paying twice as much for the same drugs. Well, how so, does that happen? Well, that's because they, the, the foreign country, like Germany, will say, this is our price, this is what we're paying. But with Medicare, we're stuck with Medicare Part B, can't negotiate prices. So what the president is proposing today is, let's shift some of those drugs to Part D, where the private insurers come in and they will negotiate prices. The goal is to bring down the drug prices by $17 billion over five years, and it will work. And plus, other countries, they don't have PBMs, the pharmacy benefit managers who are the middleman who pocket rebates and savings instead of passing the majority of those savings to patients. Absolutely right. You talked about innovation, though. The, the drug companies push back and say, uh, for instance, uh, I know over the last three years coming into this year, diabetes drugs went up on an average of 26 percent, arthritis drugs 40 percent. Humira, I'm, I'm reading, had five price increases, 51 percent. You know, I mean, it sounds crazy. It's nuts. I and mean, we it's need these, right? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 the drug companies push back and say, hey, we have to have a profit motivation. If you take that from us, Dr. Siegel, we'll never have any real innovation. Well, that's a great pushback. But consider this. A vial of most common insulin right now is over $250 per vial. Now, we have a huge problem with these biologics that are coming out or treatments for cancer. One-time treatments for cancer, over $300,000 for a treatment. We... Patients can't afford this. So the answer is, you have your patent. As long as you're on your patent, you make your profit. Afterwards, we have to allow generics in to compete. We can't allow the drug companies to game the system, Charles. Let me ask you guys also, because uh, there was also a big event yesterday on opioids, and I've spoken to mm -hmm. both of you guys about this, because uh, there's a report out now that says that uh, since 2001, the crisis has had a direct cost of $1 trillion. Dollars, one trillion dollars. That solves everything, right? We can pay our debts. We can we can invest in our country. We can invest in education. One trillion dollars. That's a human cost that equals an economic cost. Are you seeing any changes here? Yes, and the good news is, just yesterday it was announced six billion dollars has been allocated to prevention, rehab, recovery, and treatment for patients who are suffering from addiction. We have over two million patients, uh, people in this country who are suffering from addiction. So we are seeing a slow improvement. Three-tiered problem. Here's the solution. Number one, too many overprescriptions by physicians. That's being clamped down on. 250 million prescriptions written for opioids in 2015, according to CDC. Ridiculous. That's being clamped down on. The second thing is the borders, where once you get addicted to a medication, you can have fentanyl, which can kill you, coming in across the border. The third piece, which was announced yesterday, is the idea that once you're addicted, you need a drug called Suboxone or buprenorphine, which is medically-assisted therapy that works over 80% of the time to get you off of the opioid. And then 
the community takes over, hopefully. More right. money into the community, right. more, more therapists. All right. Thank you both very much. I always right. appreciate seeing you.